Well, hello there. God bless you, friends, and welcome back to another episode of the Midweek Refill. I am Bishop A. Reginald Littman. I am your host for the Midweek Refill, and I'm also the senior pastor of the New Mountaintop Church in Winston, Georgia. And I get that question all the time. I already hear it. Where's Winston? Well, Winston is a suburb on the west side of metropolitan Atlanta. In fact, we are 30 minutes from downtown Atlanta, about 20 minutes from Six Flags. So if you're ever in the greater metropolitan Atlanta area, or if you live here, listen, a church that is alive is well worth the drive. You owe it to yourself to come and see us at New Mountaintop. If by chance you're watching me, if you're one of our virtual members who live in another state, hello to you guys. Welcome back to the Midweek Refill or wherever you may be in the state of Georgia or in the United States of America or anywhere in the world because we do have viewers who tune in from different parts of the world. We certainly want to invite you personally to join us right here on this very channel every Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m for our live worship experience where we stream out all over the world and we want you to be a part of God's message and the worship wherever you are. Well, I'm excited to bring this teaching to you. Certainly want to welcome you to this study as we continue our series on lessons from the 12 disciples. Well, tonight we're moving into the study on the life of Philip. Philip is one of the 12 disciples who was chosen by Jesus Christ. And before I begin, let me just remind you to please put in the chat whatever ministers to you, whatever stands out to you, or even where you're viewing us from. All of that activity helps us to get spread out, and it tells YouTube's algorithms to push this out so that others may find this content. And hopefully you find it valuable enough that you think that other people ought to be learning more and more about the individual disciples of Jesus Christ. So please leave something in the chat for us. Leave a comment, like, share, subscribe, hit the, the bell notification so that others might find us. And also don't forget that down in the description box below is a PDF. You can print it. You can email it. You can even type on it if you choose to. It has the notes from this study as well as several personal discovery questions that will help you take a deeper dive into the scriptures as we talk this week about the disciple Philip. And the subject for this week again is Philip, a journey of faith, leadership, and redemption. So I want you to see this. This is part five of our series. If you're new to the series, or if this is your first time ever seeing my face, welcome to the Midweek Refill. I want to encourage you to go back and catch parts one through four, where we talked about several other of the disciples. But this week, we're talking about Philip, and we're looking at a journey of faith, leadership, and redemption. So Philip's journey is a captivating narrative of faith, leadership, and yes, even redemption. As we explore the scriptures, we're going to uncover some profound lessons that are embedded in Philip's life, drawing inspiration from his life and guidance for our own journeys of faith. So let's talk a little bit about Philip's background and his profession, because his journey begins with a simple yet profound call by Jesus himself. In John chapter 1, verse 43 through verse 45, we see Philip responding to the invitation of Jesus with eagerness and with faith. And he hailed from a place called Bethsaida. This would be the same town that Peter and Andrew were from. And it's very likely that 
Philip was familiar with Peter and Andrew. You know how it is when you grow up in a small town where everybody knows everybody and everybody knows everybody's business and everybody knows who used to date who and all of that kind of thing. Well, it is highly likely that Philip was in fact familiar with Peter and Andrew being that they were hometown fellows. There in Bethsaida, their lives centered around fishing. But Jesus saw something more in Philip. And guess what? He sees something more in you. The fishing lifestyle was certainly a blue collar job. It was hard labor because they would fish year round in intense weather. Extreme heat and extreme exhaustion would often cause them much strain and stress on their lives and on their person. But Jesus saw that he could take Philip's proclivity for fishing and turn it into a divine usage and call him into becoming a fisher of men. And ultimately, I believe that's the Lord's plan for all of us is that we too will become fishers of men. So let's look at this passage here in John, 4, John chapter 1, verse 43 through verse 45, and I gave it to you in Eugene P Peterson's contemporary English version. No, I'm sorry, that's not correct. The Message Bible is Eugene Peterson's translation, but this is the C-E-V, contemporary English version. It's John chapter one, verse 43, 44, and 45. And it reads like this. The next day, Jesus, decided to go to Galilee. There he met Philip, who was from Bethsaida, the hometown of Andrew and Peter. Jesus said to Philip, follow me. Philip then found Nathanael and said, we have found the one that Moses wrote about. He is Jesus, the son of Joseph, from Nazareth. Now here in John 1 43 through verse 45, we see Philip responding to the invitation of Jesus with eagerness and with faith. And you know what is so awesome about it is that 45th verse. Look at it again. When Jesus invites Philip to become a follower, Philip immediately goes searching for Nathaniel. And he says, hey, we have found the one that Moses and the prophets wrote about. How much different would evangelism be if we were to get so excited at the call and ability to follow Jesus that we would say to our closest relatives and kin and friends, hey, we have found the one you know, I think it would be a life changer and a game changer. And Philip, again, hailing from Bethsaida, from the same town as Peter and Andrew, would have this immediate excitement about having found the one. So when we think about that, we should be reminded that Jesus saw more in Philip than he saw in himself. And guess what? He sees more in you than you may in fact see in yourself. And understanding that there is more to you than meets the eye. There's more to you than people have said. There's more to you than you have ever thought. Should be something that inspires you to discover the more that the Lord has put inside of you and wants to come out of you. So family, I wanna give you several action steps as we walk through the life of Philip to help us understand how we can experience more, more, and more of Jesus and for Jesus. Here's action step number one. Number one, embrace the call. Embrace the call. 
Now, as we reflect on Philip's immediate response to Jesus' call, let's consider something. How do we respond when Christ calls us? Now, I'm not talking about the call to salvation necessarily. I'm not talking certainly not about the call to eternity. But when Christ calls us to perform any assignment, whether that is loving those that hate us or whether that is giving something to someone or whether that is simply loving someone who may be a little bit more difficult to love, how do we respond when Christ calls us? If you were to grade yourself on your responses to Christ's calls to do something for someone else or to love the unlovable or to assist those who need help, how would you grade yourself this year? Are we willing to leave behind the familiar and step into the unknown, trusting in God's guidance? Because I want you to think about that for a moment. Philip, being a fisherman, would have a regular routine of washing nets, mending nets, catching fish, cleaning fish, watch, watch, washing nets, you know, mending the nets. A regular routine, a regular cycle of life. He knew exactly what his life and life style would consist of. Yet when Christ extends this invitation to follow him, he now walks away from the routine and the mundane. And he was willing to take a risk on the call of Jesus. Are we willing to leave behind our nets, our routines, our familiarity, our regularity, and trust in Christ's guidance for our everyday lives? That, ladies and gentlemen, is what it means to embrace the call. It's being willing to walk away from what you know and trusting in who you know, and that's Jesus. That's faith personified, isn't it? Are we willing to leave behind the familiar and step into the unknown, trusting the guidance of Christ? Well, that's quite profound. It's quite prolific and it's quite piercing, to be quite honest. So let's look at his family life and his calling. Now, in Mark 13, Mark chapter 3, rather, verse 13 through 19, we see some interesting things there because little is known about Philip's family. But we do know that he was chosen by Jesus to be one of the 12 disciples. Here in Mark chapter 3, verse 13 through 19, I want you to check that out when you get a moment, you see some intentional selection of Philip for a specific purpose. He was intentionally selected for a specific purpose. And guess what? So are you. So that leads me to action step number two for this week. You and I have the responsibility to recognize your unique calling. Because just as Philip was chosen for a distinct role, take time to reflect on the unique calling that God has placed on your life. How can you use your skills? How can you use your talents for his purposes? God does not just give us gifts to sit on. No, he gives us gifts to serve with. Let's look at some key moments in Philip's life because Philip played a significant role in various key moments during Jesus's ministry. Here's one such key moment. And you can find this in John chapter six, verse number five through seven. And again, we'll use the CEV because here it says, when Jesus saw the large crowd coming toward him, he asked Philip, where will we get enough food to feed all these people? He said this to test Philip, since he already knew what he was going to do. Philip answered, don't you know that it would take almost a year's wages 
just to buy only a little bread for each of these people? Now here in John chapter six, verse five through seven, we witness here Philip's moment of testing when he is faced with the task of feeding the multitude. This was a very key moment in Philip's ministry, certainly one that he would never forget because of the large crowd. When Jesus saw that crowd, notice he goes to Philip. Where will we get enough food to feed all of these people? And there are moments in our lives that the Lord will test our faith to ultimately set us up to see the miracle that he wants to show us that will be an unforgettable experience. Here's action step number three that we take from the life of Peter. Number three, we have to trust God in moments of testing. Trust God in moments of testing. You know, the passage that we just shared from John 6, 5 through 7 was in fact that it was an opportunity for Peter, for Philip rather, to learn that you won't have all of the answers. And I don't know who this is for, but you won't always have all of the answers. But as long as you have Jesus in your midst and in charge and in control, you have the answer. And this would be the lesson that Philip along with the other 11 disciples would learn in the miracle of the feeding of the multitude with two fish and five loaves, is that we have to trust God in moments of testing. Always know this, the Lord never tests us to trick us. He only tests us to assess us. That is to say, for us to learn where we are in our level of faith, because he already knows. Remember that passage said, that Jesus asked Philip this because he already knew what he was going to do. So don't you think that it's perfectly logical that if Jesus knew what he was going to do regarding feeding the people, he certainly knew where Philip's faith was, but he wanted Philip to discover his own level of faith. And I think sometimes that the Lord will take us through so that we indeed might discover our own level of faith. If you're getting anything out of this, please leave a comment. Please hit that like button and just let us know how this is speaking to you. All right, so let's go to action step number four that we learn from the amazing life of Philip. Number four, be a bridge to Jesus. I like that one. Be, not build, but be a bridge to Jesus. That's powerful. Let's look at it. In John chapter number 12, verse 20 through 22, we find Philip becoming a bridge to Jesus. Because it reads like this, some Greeks had gone to Jerusalem to worship during Passover. Philip from Bethsaida in Galilee was there too. So they went to him. And notice how Philip is back in the spotlight again. <laughs> they went to him and said, sir, we would like to meet Jesus. Philip told Andrew, and then the two of them went to Jesus and told him. You know what's so powerful about this passage? is that these Greeks were not familiar with Jesus. They did not have a, a relationship with him. They did not have an up close and personal experience with him. In fact, they were there to see him. And yet they come to Philip and they say to him, hey, we want to meet Jesus. What's powerful about this is that Philip's encounter with these Greek speaking people highlights his role as a bridge between people and Jesus. And I want you to think about that for a minute. Had he shut them down? Had he discouraged them? Had he told them, oh, he's not all he seems to be? Had he in some way 
misrepresented Jesus. Rather than being a bridge to Jesus, he would have been a block or blockage to Jesus. Now, I want you to think about that. How do you and I act towards people who need to see Jesus? Do we become bridges or do we become blockages? Do we become bridges who make it possible for them to meet Jesus, see Jesus, experience Jesus, be exposed to Jesus? Or do we become blockages that make, make them want nothing at all to do with Jesus because of our representation of Jesus? So the question becomes, how can you be a bridge? How can you connect others to the love and the truth that is found in Christ? I want you to think about that this week and also think about who can you be a bridge to? Who is it that is waiting on you to share, show, and shed light, the light of Christ in their life? Who is it that's waiting on you to become a bridge that leads them over to where Jesus is? It's very powerful when you really think about all of this. So let's look at some of the lessons that are learned from the life of Peter, the life of Philip, pardon me. So from Philip's life, Philip's journey teaches us valuable lessons valuable lessons. There are lessons of faith, lessons of leadership, and lessons of redemption. Let's take a little deeper look at the lessons that we learn from Philip's journey. So his initial faith in following Jesus, remember when Jesus calls him from fishing with a net to now fishing for the hearts and souls and minds of people, his initial faith in following Jesus is a great lesson for you and I as it relates to lessons of faith. Being willing to let go of what you know and go with the flow and go wherever Jesus goes, that, friends, is a great lesson of faith. And then his leadership in challenging situations. You know, when he was asked by Jesus, intentionally and deliberately, hey, where can we get food to feed these people? His leadership also in helping others to find Christ is a remarkable lesson that we take from the life of Philip. And then ultimately his own redemption through Christ, grace is also a wonderful lesson we can take away from the life of Philip. Let me give you action step number five. And again, there's a PDF handout that's right down there in the description box that you can get to access all of this and so much more. So action step number five is strengthen your faith. Strengthen your faith faith. That's a step that we learn, again, from the amazing life of Philip. I want to challenge you to reflect on the early moments of Philip's faith journey. And how can you strengthen your faith and respond eagerly to Christ's call on your life? This fisherman had no formal education or training, did not come from a silver spoon. But what he did have was strong faith, faith enough to step away from the familiar and to follow the eternal. So I want to challenge you to strengthen your own faith and show that strength by taking bold moves for and with Christ. All right, here's action step number six from the life of Philip. Number six, lead with humility and dependence on God. You know, Philip's leadership was characterized by humility and by dependence on God. As you think about your own leadership style, 
Consider how you can lead with a servant's heart, relying on God's strength. Whether you're a leader at home, in your church, your community, at a school, or wherever it may be, think about your leadership style. Is it characterized, like Philip, by humility and dependence on God? Or is it all about you, what you want? And as the old song says, it's my thing, do what I want to do. That's not the way that we should lead. All right, here's action step number seven. Action step number seven is this. Embrace God's redemptive power. You know, Philip's life is a testimony to God's redemptive power. And I love it because we don't have a whole lot of details about his life prior to. In fact, any of the uh, 12, we know a lot about Paul's life prior to being converted on the road to Damascus, but we don't have a whole lot of details about what kind of guy Philip was before he met Jesus. But you know what? Regardless of past mistakes or shortcomings that Philip may have had in his life, he embraced the redemption offer through Christ Jesus. Can I tell you, that regardless of past mistakes or shortcomings you have made, you can embrace the redemption that is offered through Christ Jesus. If any man be in Christ, any man, woman, boy, or girl, of any color, any ethnicity, any whatever, whosoever will, if any person is in Christ, he or she is a new creature right then and there, Old things have passed away, and behold, all things do become brand new. Man, I love this series, and I'm enjoying walking with these 12 disciples and learning so much about them and learning how we can apply principles from their lives. Thank you so much for tuning in. I want to encourage you and remind you, please grab that free PDF handout in the description box below. Get it. Read it. Share it with somebody you love and take a deeper dive into the life of these 12 disciples so that you too may become an even greater, closer, stronger, faith-filled disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hey, this is Bishop Littman. You've been listening to the Midweek Refill. We love you with the love of the Lord. And until this time next week, you go with God.